Welcome to Grizz's workshop. This great lummox is Grizz. Not an expert or an exemplar of safety. It's been one of those weeks in the workshop where I finally tackled some of those tasks that have been outstanding for some time. I've been wanting a fence for the table saw for four or five years now. The one that came with it it's not very good at all. It doesn't run the full length of the saw. This means loading heavy and bulky material can knock the fence, causing deflection. And they're not even cuts. Any side pressure would just move the fence. It's pretty pointless. In that time, I've watched several videos and I've taken this and that from them. I can't remember the videos I watched, but I assure you this is not original in its entirety. So to start, I have 18 mil plywood. Um, and I cut it to the height of a two by four, so that's 90 mil. And I cut in half, which just happened to be the correct length for the saw. Next, using a stop block, I cut out the nubbins to a consistent width. I marked the top of all of them, then screwed two together and drilled a hole at the drill press in the centre. Using each of the first two as a template for the second set, this ensured that the hole was centre on all of them. I assembled the ply and nubbins together, left a space at the end, the width of the nubbin, screwed them together. I made another two pieces of ply, the width of the nubbin plus the ply. The back one was much longer than the front. The back piece had a small bit of ply on the top to ride the rails to ensure there wasn't too much twist. Poked a meter threaded rod through the holes. They lined up as expected. In the back piece, I inserted the threaded insert and two nuts to keep it where it was. On the back of the saw, I'd previously added a wooden batten so the fence had something to catch on. Now I needed a big knob. I'd seen people do this on many videos. I picked out the correct hole saw and started the painful cut with it. Now this hole saw, like a lot of hole saws, isn't very good. But it was good enough to mark the surface into a circle. I then marked eight even places around the circle. I used my force a bit and cut the finger holes, hoping it would make it easier when I used the hole saw again to actually cut through the material. It kept getting jammed so I drilled the centre hole out wider so that the, the drill piece had a hole to go through uh, but the saw kept catching as it went but eventually I got through enough so that I could snap the rest off. And then I took it to the bobbin sander where I finessed the shape, making it a lot smoother and more comfortable in the hand.
Then in the knob, I inserted yet another insert. So I could take the test nut off the fence and then add my knob. It took more twisting on my knob than I expected to get it tight. I then had to change the, the front piece of the uh, fence just so it caught more of the track. After it was complete, I thought it was great, and then I ran into a problem with the table saw sled. The wooden batten that I put on the back was getting in the way of the track. So I used my uh, pull saw and chisel to create a new path, ugly but effective. It's all done and a massive improvement. The saw will do me for a little while, even though I still have my eye on a new one. Black Friday sales coming soon. I added some grip tape for yet more hold. And I'm very pleased with it. Grip tape is one of those staple items I keep in stock, very handy. Another long overdue issue in the shop was my camera mount. It needed a link removing. Uh, if you watch Woby, Woby's design video on this, um, it'll go into detail what I have here. I didn't buy his plans, I just copied them. And um, it would have been better if I'd bought his plans and used his, as opposed to mine were a bit all right, but they work now. It was much better with just the one arm rather than two. I think they're wider and hopefully better angles for filming. The workbench top is filthy, full of drips and lumps made from glues and epoxy resin. It's best to have a flat surface to work on, so I proceeded scraping the workbench top and then I sanded it and I applied some MDF sealant. It works a treat, it came out so much nicer. I do have footage of myself making the workbench and that eventually might make its way into a video, we'll see. A productive yet boring week in the shop. Thanks for watching it all the same.
Thanks for watching. See you next time on Grizz's Workshop.